Good morning, I'm Reverend Scott Carnes, the pastor here at Abingdon United Methodist Church. And I welcome you to worship on this Sunday, January 10th. This is a somber time for our nation, for our, our world. And, I, and I'll be just very honest that it was a difficult week to be a pastor uh, planning worship and, and trying to plan a, a sermon. Though this is not the service that had been planned uh, bef before this week, I, I truly believe that, that God's Spirit is present in, in, in this worship today and, and was present in, in the reimagining of what was possible in this strange week. Originally, we had planned a baptismal reaffirmation, and uh, though the nature of it has changed, we're going to continue forward with that. I, I invite you to get a bowl and put some water in it, if you haven't already, and to have that during worship, so we can touch the water and remember what it is uh, to be a child of God. Let us turn and worship our God with prayer. Let us open in prayer. We are but imperfect people in an imperfect church and living in an imperfect world. Help us to set our hearts and minds upon you and your peace. Help us to see your love in the world, confront evil, and find hope for the future. And may this time of worship be a starting place. Amen. This morning as we begin worship, I ask that we would begin with prayers for our world, our troubled nation, our local community, and of course this congregation. Let us pray for the nation and the world. Dear God, you are the creator of all things. You are the God of restorative justice, so if anyone can put things right, it is you. Help us on this day to put our hope and our trust in you, our God, above all others. And may you lead this nation, may you lead this world, that we would find your kind of peace and your kind of justice for all its inhabitants. That we would find a way forward that honors life and pursues justice for all people. In your holy and blessed name we pray. Amen. Let us worship our God with song.
as we do each week, we light candles. For those of whom we know about that need our prayer. We hold up not only members of this congregation, but friends and family that surround it, and people of our community, nation, and world who most need our prayer. Let us pray. Dearest God, there are many among us today who, who are hurting. May each person who hurts on this day feel your loving embrace. May they know that you are, they are your child and that you are their God. We pray especially for those who, who grieve the loss of a loved one, for those who, who find themselves ill or in, in mind, body, or spirit, those who are imprisoned, those who find themselves unable to do the things that have brought them joy in the past. May we, Lord, experience your joy. May we, may we be lifted up in, in, in the joys that surround us, and, and in the, the troubles that we experience, may we feel you uh, and experience you walking with us. May we know that we are never alone in our struggles, and that we are never solely the cause of our joys. Help us to be with one another, helping one another to see your goodness in this world, helping to lift one another up, in the joy of the Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. As we digest all that we have seen in the world over the past few days, we have to decide how will we react and respond. May we take this prayer of St. Francis and make it our own. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, and it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Amen.
Our scripture today comes from Psalm 51, verses 10 through 17. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God. God of my salvation so so my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I gave an entirely burned offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice, God. You won't despise a heart, God, that is broken and crushed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Wednesday happened. (laughs) I I don't know what else. Uh, I I I found myself without words. I found myself not quite sure what Sunday should be. I I realized by Wednesday night or Thursday morning that I didn't really have a worship service appropriate to to the week, to the moment, to to what was happening in this world. So uh, luckily I I turned to some clergy friends and I I turned to scripture. I ran into Psalm 51 on a clergy uh, uh, online group And, and you, you heard uh, several verses of it. Uh, the first few verses we read, create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Uh, please don't throw me out of your presence. Uh, return the joy of your salvation. Uh, uh, deliver me from violence so that my tongue can sing your righteousness. Open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. The first nine verses, before we get to these verses, the first nine verses, the writer very clearly says that that they are repenting for sinning against God. To understand the sin, though, we we have to kind of work backward. The, The writer is asking for a clean heart. So apparently, one of the sins is that they've had an unclean heart. One of their sins seems to be that they can't feel God's spirit. They've become hard-hearted, and, and they're either under the threat of violence or they're repenting for, for being part of violence against others. Either way, this writer is, is speaking to a, a feeling of separation between themselves and their God. And and that's what sin is. Sin is a a, uh, distance between, uh, well, a a felt distance between humanity and their God. So so the writer who is repenting is is seeking to overcome that distance, is seeking to become closer to God and to find greater faith. I mean, that's, that's pretty incredible in itself. I mean, it it takes real faith to seek out repentance. It it really takes something to to say, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. It it really takes something to say, deliver me from violence. Uh, There is an emptiness, a brokenness, a, a pain that the writer is trying to get past. The writer yearns for something more. Clearly, Clearly there is uh, brokenness in their life. What I saw on Wednesday was, it was abhorrent to me. It was violent, it was anti-democratic. There was racism in the words, the banners, the flags, the clothing. As I watched the takeover of the Capitol unfolding before me, and, and you all did too, um, I, I had to ask myself, what's driving this? And, and what I saw 
is people who, who, who are grasping for power because they feel powerless. People who, who are trying to take control because their world is changing so quickly around them. I, I saw people who were expressing great anger, but I, I suspect that it was driven by fear because they've had so many losses in their lives. I suspect, I suspect that it isn't just those people on TV. The, the mob seemed full of fear and pain and brokenness and, and they were acting out violently upon the world and they, they, they clearly were experiencing a, a distance from God caused by hate and sin, but unlike the psalmist, they didn't even seem to know it. I suspect that even though it may not be extreme like that, I think many of us are struggling with some of the same kinds of feelings um, about ourselves. And no matter how faithful we are already, it is easy to, to, to have these feelings of anxiety and fear, anger, hate, uh, and, to, and to allow that to drive a wedge between us and our God and, and us and other people, to separate us from God. It's easy to imagine violence as an answer. I've been guilty of that myself many, many times. The answer, though, is in the psalm. When we feel uh, fear that our world is turned upside down, we first call out to God, don't throw me out of your presence. When we feel our faith is too small, we call out to God, put a willing spirit within me. When we are driven by violent thoughts, we might just ask, deliver a, me from violence. Our God can put a clean heart in us, can put a faithful spirit within us. We don't need to f uh, find just the right politician as our Savior. First, we need to turn to our God uh, anew and, and reorder our life to put God first and to be accountable to God's kind of peace and justice, not the kind of justice that makes us feel better. This week, if we are feeling anxious or, or angry, or, or filled with frustration. Let us turn first to God and ask for deliverance from this brokenness and pain. That, that, that we would be able to bridge that distance between us and our God, to feel close once again. And when we do that, when we come together as a community, getting closer to God, uh, we can turn to one another and we can find real solutions to the problems that plague us. If we feel all alone, isolated, afraid, and angry, there's no answer in that. But when we draw closer to our God, uh, when, when we draw closer to one another and seek truth, we can find salvation because our God, our God is offering it already. As we respond to this scripture today, we do so at the font. Now, we are not in one space where we can all share in one font of water. But we are in a time of worship together, spiritually. Spiritually. And we come to the waters together as one congregation, though we are in different places. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters 
to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. I ask this congregation, as you are gathered today, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And if so, will you say, we do? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life? And if so, will you say, we will? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will create a community of love and forgiveness that we may grow in our trust of God and be faithful in service to others. May we be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. May that be our statement of faith as we, as we pray over these waters. Let us all pray over this font as I pray over the font in your space of worship as well. You, O God, are the voice above the waters, thundering wisdom, flashing glory, showering grace. We praise you. You sent Jesus to give us living water, the cup of blessing, the cup of promise, the cup of salvation. We give you thanks. Now send your spirit to make this water a pool of healing, a river of new life, a flood of grace. We glorify you, Lord. Keep us one with you, one in the way, one in the truth, and one in the life of Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you. We give you thanks. We glorify you now and forevermore. Amen. This is the point at which I would invite the congregation to come forward and to touch the water and remember their baptism. But before we do that here in this service, I, I want to look at the questions that are asked of all members of the United Methodist Church that perhaps we would have these questions upon our hearts as we touch the water and ask ourselves if we are doing this in every way that we can and to ask God's help to grow in, in, our, in our commitment to the church, to God, to our faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people uh, of all ages, nations, and races? I want you to create a holy moment in your holy space, wherever it is you're worshiping right now. Take as much time as you need to, to pray, and if you need to, just pause the service for a, for a little bit extra, if, if you need some extra time in prayer. I ask us to pray over, over what it is to be committed to Christ, to the church, to our faith. And then I invite you to touch the water. To touch the water. And to rem remember that you are a child of God, beloved in every way. This is not baptism, nor do you need to have been baptized already to take part. This is a reminder of what it is to be committed to our God 
and for our God to be so fully committed to us as God's children. Typically, we conclude a time of baptismal reaffirmation by um, reciting what it is to be members of the United Methodist Church. And, and if you're watching or, or if you're worshiping with us and you are not a member of the United Methodist Church, this is all right. Uh, please be a part of this with us that you would ask these same questions of your experience in your own church or with your own group of Christian friends. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. To the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace.
Thank you for your church, founded upon your word, that challenges us to do more than sing and pray. But go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depends on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together. Sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God. We pray.
above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up, defeated the grave, raised to life. Come. 